So, um, yeah, so um, there's two fans here, obviously, but I don't think Amigas need fans, not in a case this big. But there will be two fans in there, so you can, you can connect them up uh, and suck all the air out. Um, there's this user port, I call it like a user panel, so it's a specific size, and you're going to be able to 3D print, and we're going to make uh, uh, panels that screw into it. And then you can put, for example, these will just snap in. And so you can have as many ports as you like that snap in the back there and design your own. If you want, I was going to put a pie on it, so pie sticks out the back. And some of you may have seen my. Look. I'll have to talk about this separately because this is actually a big subject. Um, for getting a pie with this little switcher and creating the, the new version of Siamese system. I'll talk about that later if you're interested. So um, it's really a case of figuring out what suits you best. Um, but if I take the lid off. So you can see you've got the risers on there. Remember the risers are optional. In fact, now, originally when I spoke to uh, Retro Man Cave, I said that the risers were going to be included, but I did the math and I just couldn't include them. It was like that, I had to put the price up and I didn't really want to put it up anymore. Um, but half, half the people don't want one. So now it's interesting, because of the shape of the thing, you, you do that and you pop it down, it comes off. Okay? So there's the lid. Can you see inside with that? I can. Oh, I could lift it up for you. Actually. Get the zoom in. Right. right. So, basically, what we got here is obviously the floppy disk goes in here. Uh, now, the this is a slot loading DVD. Now, the problem is there's SATA, and the Amigas have a problem with SATA. But I have found a SATA to ID adapter, which I haven't tested yet because when I went to plug in, it was the wrong configuration. But you'll notice there's a little. It's hard to see it here, but there's a frame little 3D printed frame that I made and all, the, and all these 3D parts, all the designs will be, for, you'll be able to print it yourself or go to my Shapeways page and just order that, it's about 12 13 pound to print it and then you can screw that in and then that screws to the tray. Now, if you've got a 3 now obviously with the drive, technically the drive tray will take four devices. Realistically, shit's going to get in the way. So, um, You've obviously got to flop it on an Amiga. I'm only talking about Amigas today because it's probably the easiest thing to do. Um, but you've got your, your flop drive is going to take a bay. Um, your, this is a slot load. We'll go in there. But you could technically, if you could put um, two and a half inch device, you can do that. I think for Amigas now, you're better off with um, with these. I think these are actually probably better. The compact flash. So you can have that hooking in the back. There's also I don't know if any of you have seen around the front. One change I did make. A, there's a gap here, this big gap here, and if you see on my PC, the picture on the PC, you'll see I've got USB ports, audio input, and there's also um, showing it. Well, mine, mine's just got that, but you'll see one picture with two USBs and a and, um, compact flash reader at the front. So my thought, my thinking is that there'll be little adapters, and you'll be able. To, we all know what these little um, cards are, and you'll be able to screw it onto the adapter, put it in there, and you get your compact flash from the front. So I think for me, that tends to be quite a good way of doing it. And you can just pop that out. Um, I'm also thinking of making a, a closer, so actually it disguises it if you're not putting anything in there. So it just looks like that again. Um, but it depends if I've got the budget to do it. So that's fine. Now on PC, it's slightly different. Now, the front here, I'll go to the internals in a second, but the front, obviously the pad, people said, oh, well, can, can you not put, a, you know, can you put another one? Because on the 1200, there's three LEDs. Can you not put, no. It's an Amiga 3000 design, it's a complete rip-off, as very kindly said I was inspired, and I ripped it totally off. Um, and so it's designed to look as close as it possibly can, apart from being two inches wider. Um, but I've now got a five and a quarter drive base. And originally it was only going to have three and a, three and, um, you know, three and a half inch drives, but I decided to go... Actually, I, it wasn't me who had the idea, it was a lady called Briel. Uh, I don't know if any of you have seen her on the, the Amiga forms of Brielle in America. Anyway, she said you need to be able to put five and a quarter drive bays in there. And I went, you're an idiot. I, there's no way. The 3000 never had that. And I thought about it, thought about it. And in the end, I was sat there one night, up to about two in the morning, redesigned the whole front and making these. Because originally that, that was going to be one piece with just floppy disk drive, well, a single floppy disk drive, and that was going to be blank. Okay, so it was just like it. And I thought, no, this makes much more sense. We'll put five and a quarter drive bays in there. You can slide in a normal, normal drive, normal like DVD drive, into either of these, space permitting. Obviously, it's really important 
you know, when you're building these things, five and a quarter drive bay comes to about here, so it does get a little bit close. You could put it in here, but it looks stupid. I think you need, if you're going to put a five and a quarter normal one in there, stick it there and put the floppy disk here because it looked nice and tidy. But having said that, when you've seen them looking like that, exactly how it's meant to, you really want to go for a slot loader. Will you be able to 3D print your own fascias to go? Yes. So, as standard, I know these are black, bear with me. Um, so, there's basically four different types that I'm doing a step with, no, three different types. There's obviously the Mega Floppy Disk one. We have to have that. It's compatible with all the 1200, 600, and 500 disks. That's why you notice there's a little bit of a big gap around it, so that it because it moves in different positions. There's also the blanks. So, you know, you want it blank. And, it, and it obviously they all match the design along the front here. And then there's this. Now, the most popular use for this is going to be GoTech drives. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you can slot a, a nice go take it. Now, bear in mind, obviously, they all come in white and black, or, sorry, that colour. Um, so they're your three and a half inch drives. Now, if I meet the, the stretch goal, because it's really tightly budgeted, if I meet the stretch goal, then I'll do this one as well. Now, I think this is the best look, because it's, it's got this lovely little slot loader. I did bring it, and it just slots in there like that. Just, just works absolutely beautiful. To be fair, I'll cop that one up. It's a little bit shallow, so this is the actual final one. It's coming up a little bit higher, um, but it, you know, just slides in there nicely. Take that out, spits it out. Connecting is a different story. If you want to slot load it, it gets a bit more complicated, which we'll try and work out later on. But I know that some of the cards have got looking into SATA, but there are SATA to IDE adapters. Whether they'll work with IDE interface, I'm doing it because obviously, if you're building a PC with Amiga Forever. You can plug in anything you like, so it's all good. So that's that's the reason for the front. Um, there's four different types. Now, inside, power supply. Nice little SFX Just power need, supply. Need to get it down a little bit lower. Yeah, cool. So we've got this little SFX power supply. Now the original one it always always bugged me. There was a number, even though I really liked it, there was a number of things I didn't like about it at the time. One of the things was you still had to have that external power supply. We didn't have these then, so we couldn't do that. Now we've got these tiny little things. Now this is a 300 watt power supply. Nothing on me is going to ever stress that out. So what we do with that is, it's very hard to see, but if you can see that cable, yeah, power cable follows along here, and then it goes into this board. Can you see all that? See the board? So that's the expansion board for the 500. You also notice there's a gap there. That's, uh, another change in design that's got to be done. But basically what that does is, that allows you to fit, not only, um, if I can probably take that out, you can see that a little bit easier. Okay, screw that. So how much would that ball be? It's that... looking about 50 quid. It's about 50 something. Basically what I'm doing is, whatever it costs, I'm adding a tenner. So, you know, it's literally going to be that. It's... So does that jump the heat? Voltage is back onto the yeah, yes. of, of the 500. Straight on the muscle, yeah. It's the best way of doing it as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I've got that out of the way. Now you'll notice, now the good thing now is originally this case, that bumped up to the right there. But because I wanted to get that water cooling unit in for the PC side, I had to go back about two inches, which meant I could put full length cards in there. So anything can go in there. Bearing in mind, if you plug it in here, you're talking a, a Zorro 2 slot. Does that have any soft power options, or is it all hard power? Yeah. It just literally, there's a switch, there's an electronic switch from there, goes onto this board here, okay. you hit the switch, it's got a nice, it's not as, well actually it's a nice look, this one's actually, you, if you look at it you can see it's a bit twitchy, but I know I'm trying to get the right sort of spring, some of them are really too hard, I'm trying to emulate that mm -hmm. mechanism from the 3000, which is, I don't know why I'm bothering, but it, it's just, it's, and if you've ever opened a 3000 dub, it's just a bloody plastic bar from there, and it goes to a switch on the power supply, it is atrocious. So you think it's beautiful, you open it up and go, actually that's not very good, is it? So this is a nice electronic switch, so it's electronic, it comes, to, in fact, it's, you can just see it down here, it's this grey wire here. There's also, um, on the new version of this, there's power for the, uh, power output for the fans. So if you do want to put colour fans on it, suck air through. Um, and that'll work well. Now, the one I wanted to show you, can you, can you see that? Yeah. yeah. Let me turn it around a little bit. Right. This here, the bottom slot, 
So this connects, the power goes into this board. Okay? The board plugs into the 500, powers the entire motherboard. Okay? Gives you plenty of power. You're never going to run out of power, trust me on this. So, but that one there, what that's doing is, it's reversed. It's taken the entire 86 pin bus and done that to it. And so it's literally flipped over. So anytime you put anything in here, you have to flip it over. Okay? So that, that's quite important. Um, but that gives you the 86 pin. But this one here is a 100 pin Zorro 2 slot. Now, uh, Robert said, I mean, I, I, we, we've tested it. You can run both at the same time. Now, we're not saying everything will work completely reliable, but we, have, we don't think there'll be anything that will cause a problem because technically, that is a CPU socket, which is what's in the 2000. There's, there isn't any real difference. I think there may be one line that's different. Um, but we haven't got any buffering and stuff on it, so it's just a single slot. And it's never, I've never had a problem with it, so it should run fine. Now, most people, I think, will use one or the other, to be honest. But there are going to be people that are going to put, I tell you it's a good one, is if you want to put like a, an ACA, um, ACA 500 Plus, which I'm a massive fan, um, even though Jen's told me off putting it on the 1000. Um, so if you put one of them in there and you put your drive in it, you, you know, your, your, your compact flash card. I mean, I, if you see my pictures, I've got a, a 1230 Mark II plugged into that with a really the nice 50 mega so, um, 030. You could then put a graphics card in there as well, Picasso or something like that. You could put a graphics card in there. Now, which would make an amazing little system, but I think you'd completely waste your time because you stick a vampire in and it'd be way better. Okay? Now, a lot of people who are getting the ump saying the vampire, oh no, it's taken over from the Amiga, and I absolutely agree with them. So I won't be running the new AGA cores because I want to use my chipset. So what you do is you use the two series cores. And so you get the RTG, so basically you're, what you're getting is, you're getting a really high power, really fast RTG graphics card, and a 6880, as they're calling it, processor, running at like the equivalent of 80 to 100 <coughs> running like it's absolute bloody crazy speeds. Um, and you can still use all the chips. So nothing's been affected because when you came in, you saw I've got two monitors, yeah, and I had yeah, the yeah. demo, that's one on the Amiga chips yeah, there. Yeah, so it's RGB for workbench. Absolutely and then. right, yeah. So anything on here is coming out, anything on that screen is coming out the Vampire, anything on this screen is coming out the Amiga chips. But if you put the 3.0 core on, it's all HDMI. Isn't it's it? all through here and it's all done on the Vampire. Now that's cool because if you, I'll give you an example because I've never been a massive fan about the 600 ever. Having said that, it's a great thing for the vampire. So if you've got a 600, stick a vampire in it and just use it as a single monitor system with, with AGA. It's a fantastic <coughs> uh, doing that. So, but I, I like to use my chips because I'm a bit attached to the chipset. And, and they all know what I'm like. But they're, they're, they're not stopping development on the 2 Series. I thought they were going <clears> to <throat> stop when they got to um, the AGA, but they're not. They're continuing developing it. And they're just treating it. So it's just like everything but no AGA. And I'm happy with that because I've got RTG, which is amazingly fast. Now I don't replay really games and this can, can do fine for me. You'll also notice on the front it's got the little LEDs. If I turn this around it's going to be very hard to see. But you, can you see that little board there? Um, the one that wouldn't go a bit lower? Oh yeah sure. So this is the LED boards on here. Um, it connects to the uh, keyboard connect connector. How it connects is different depending on your configuration what you're doing. So it does get quite complex when you build these things. Because there's so many different uh, ways of doing this. But it works with the PC and the Amiga side. So you've got power leak comes off, powers, um, and you've got the LED. So you've got a hard drive LED and a power LED at the front. Uh, if you're using the Amiga, you have to use the Amiga one for the power. If you're using the PC, you use the other one. And the hard drive one is an interesting one because obviously that on the PC, you just plug it into the hard drive connector. Um, on the Amiga side, it's a bit more tricky because you've got to connect it to whatever's flashing, and I believe there's a, you can connect it onto the Vampire, there's a couple of diodes you just connect it to, I think, but I mean, I'm just even more clear with that. So, um, there, again, you know, if, if, you're, if you're a builder, then it's, it's lots and lots of fun. Now, that's, if you buy that board, now, people have said to me, yeah, but what if I don't want to buy that board, how do I connect the power? Which is a really good point, and I, I must admit, I kind of, have any of you seen the pictures I put online? The pictures are oh. probably no, okay, no. fine. So you're gonna to have to use your imagination now. Yeah? If you imagine that board there, yeah. right, this board here, that big, that wide, with that connector on it, with a couple of little LEDs, and a four-way plug, 
that has a cable then, so that plugs into the tiny version, the cheap tiny version, a little cable comes out, and then, because this is in design, it's not been made yet. On the back, there's a little tiny circuit board with a connector, yeah, I think I've you seen plug that. that into there, and it's got five pins yeah. that go straight into that. And then there'll be a little screw in 3D part you can put on the back to print it up if you want to print it up. And that's literally what we do. Because the problem was, we was originally going to, we was going to feed onto the board, but then Rob told me, because I said, it's not a problem, we just, we just use the, the volt here, you can 12 volt, 5 volt, and ground, we can just use that. He said, man, nah, it's minus 12. Right, yeah. one quick, Couldn't one quick it. question. Yeah, say, on. say I, I go for the Kickstarter, yep. and I buy the case, yep. but I can't afford, afford the power board at first. Plug your old power supply. Right, but will I have the option to buy that later? Yes, yes, because the, the good thing, well, as far as, well, as far as the electronics are concerned, um, I've got to deal with Rob. Rob designs them and makes them. So he will make a batch of them and you will be able to get them. Now, obviously, when you buy them, you're coming through me. If I drop dead, okay, or anything happens to me, right, then Rob just carries on making the circuit boards. Now, as far as the cases are concerned, you know, I, of course I'm going to carry on. The plan is to carry on making them, but I will only do them in small batches, so you'll find... Once they, once, when I do the moulds, I have to make a thousand of all the parts. So I'll have 500, because it's 500 for the Kickstarter, so I'll have 500 plastic sets shoved in the loft, kind of mixture of black and, and white, waiting to make them. So then every time I get my list, when I get to like around 50 cases, I'll get 50 cases made and ship out a batch of 50 cases. So I've said to everyone, what you want to do is, is to order. Because obviously, all at the moment, what you're doing is you're basically saying, I want a case, I'm registering a case, I'm paying for the case. Nothing more, you're not even paying for postage. But there'll be options. So, a lot of people, and I did a video this morning about this actually, because it wasn't very clear. One of the important things about this, if you see this back panel, can you see the screws? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. There's two screws there, three screws here, two screws there. Now, if you hold it, I mean, you're welcome to come and play with it as much as you like, but if you hold it all that, one of those. Yeah, that was nice. Let me do that one up. Um, once it's done up, that's rigid. But you can take that off and put a PC one on. Now there's two. There's basically this is the 500 version. There is a 1200 and 600 version, which is the same. They're identical with back. So you rip that off and put the 1200 one. And if you put a 600 or 1200, it's the same board. There's also a PC one. So the PC one has three fans in it because you need to suck as much air as possible. <laughs> so it's got three fans on it, um, and, but there's, there's two types of PC one. So you've got the horizontal one, which is just like this, so you get your big fat GPU, you've probably seen already. But there's also the half height vertical slot one. So if you've got a micro ATX case, and you want it, you're not that bothered about the latest and greatest <coughs> graphics card, yeah. you can slot in there like a little half height GPU, and then get your other bits and pieces. You, you'll have about three or four slots, technically, with the, you'll have room for that, mm. which might be a nice way of doing it. If you're doing it with the horizontal, then technically, you could technically put a single card and another card, um, but most people just put a like, double high GPU, etc. If you're going to put, and I'm getting off the subject of the media for a second, if you do put a GPU in, there's a bloody great big picture on the Kickstarter, and it says, do not use, well, do not use these GPUs, but use these ones. So basically, if you've got a GPU that sucks air at the front, so it pulls it nicely through them vents, yeah. sucks it in, comes up, blows it up and fires it out the back. If you use one of them, this doesn't really get hot. Right. So I've got a GTX 1080 in mine. I, don't, I did a video about the temperatures. Yeah. We've got a 1080 and I was overclocking it. And I got, um, I actually said it was an only an i3 actually, but it was a, a quad core i3, so it was great for VR. And a water cooling block that sits in here. So, it, But it blows air down. If you can see... Can you see those holes in the base? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> oh, okay. Can you see the holes in the base? Now, for Amigas, that is a great ventilation for your 060. Because people say, can you put some ventilations? No, I'm not going to do that because it will suck through the front. And I thought, no, I need water cooling block. And I thought, oh, you know what? There you go, you've got your vents. So that's going to... I, I, what I found is, on a PC, if you've got the right GPU and you've got your water cooler in there, this does not get hot. Because these three fans here, yes, they're only little 350mm fans, they're very quiet as well, they're called Simon. 
not quite solid, but they nearly are. And they, and they suck the air out, but it, most of the air has gone out the back of the GPU and gone out through the floor there. Now, of course, you can't slide the keyboard underneath there with the, the heat pumping down on it, obviously. But, um, so that, that's, that, that's that bit. So this is kind of the crucial bit. This back panel is really the modular bit. Now, people say, well, how can you put all these types in here? Well, if you look right underneath, you, you won't pick that up with the camera, but hopefully you lot will be able to see this. Can you see all these yeah. marks? Yeah. yeah. Each one of them is a stud, okay? And it's a little four mil, inside it sits up about four millimeters. And I've got all the studs in there for the positions of all the motherboard, every single motherboard, okay? So if you want to put a mini ITX, micro ITX, uh, Amiga 500, 1200, 600, all the hole, wherever the holes are on all the boards, you have a stud. Now, the, have you, how many built cake computer PCs? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so what you do, you remember when you build, you get your case and you get those little studs and you screw into it? Yeah, the right. Yeah, then you've got them. Yeah. Absolutely, so you do the same thing with this, but you've got the screw holes for any kind of motherboard. So you screw them in where you want them, yeah, I always forget. Yeah, yeah. yeah I just can't. They, they call them standoffs, no problem. Yeah, stand you can all stand on mountain posts. Yes. So you have to put them in to rise them up to the right height, because at the moment their studs are too low. You put them in, rise them up. And then <clears throat> you just basically swap this. Now, I was actually going to make a point. A lot of people have asked, I did a video this morning. Someone said, well, what if I want to build a PC, then, or I want to build an Amiga, and then I change my mind? Say I, I put my 500 in it and then I change my mind and want to build a PC with it. I said, well, just make sure you order the PC backplate as well. So you, in theory, if all goes well, this will continue to sell forever. But we all know what happens. So if you do, any time you think you might want to do that, it's not going to hurt. I think they're £25 for another one of these backplates. Pop, get that and have that and you've always got it. Um, so, uh, that's a, now that's the, to me, that's the most important part, is that back panel. Um, because it allows it to do so many different things. 